So guys, I get this question a lot. I am a backend engineer. I've been working for three, four, five, six, seven years, but I have no idea how to show the recruiter that I possess these backend engineering skills or those frontend engineering skills or those database engineering skills. Uh, can you show me how can I build a portfolio, a backend specific portfolio to show your skills? And uh, uh, a lot of uh, usual answers for this and, and uh, the advice is very common is build a live project and share the link on Netlify on your resume and, and be gone with. But in my opinion, that is a very uh, incomplete way of showing your skills because just that because you built something that works does not mean that you actually illustrate and can communicate that you understand what you built. That is why these methods that I'm going to explain and I'm, I'm going to articulate one after the other can help you build this backend portfolio and can give you more confidence even in yourself, right? Not just the recruiter or whomever you want to show those skills to. So I have here nine possible tools that you can pick in order to build your portfolio or specifically I'm going to talk about the backend because that's what how I know. and. By all means, you can't possibly do all of them because you, you're going to be a god otherwise if you do all of them. But uh, some three or four or, or a couple of them uh, in your Swiss Army knife can help you essentially demonstrate these skills. All right, guys, let's jump into tool number one, which is building a live project and actually sharing it with whom you, with whom you want to demonstrate your skills, right? And this is very common. You will sit down and pick a back-end project. So that, okay, I want to build an API that allows me to build a chatting system that is end-to-end -end encryption, right? In order to do that, you can sit down and actually just build that project and then push it into a repository as a source code and uh, make it available on one of those services, such as uh, GitHub Pages or Cloud Cloudflare pages or Netlify and then share that link. And that's a very good way to demonstrate your skills because this way, hey, I actually built this. Go and check it. And uh, the interviewer or whomever you share this project with can go and tinker with the project and try to find you some bugs. But that does not, unfortunately, does not give the full picture, especially with me. All right, uh, I interviewed many, many people and sharing that project, just that link, is not sufficient in my opinion because i'd like to uh, kind of uncover the rest of the layers of your skills and just the final product yeah you can see the source code and see it can tell you a lot not don't don't get me wrong but still not enough because how do i know that you actually didn't just uh, use the library that did most of the work and you don't really know how it actually works and yeah some some people don't care about how things work. I personally do, and many, many other engineers actually do care about how actually things work. All right, so that's number one. Live project, very, very popular way, still very critical. I think I recommend everyone to actually do it. Number two, that system design document. So as you build that live project, you have to demonstrate how you actually built that project. And in order to do that, sit down and write in a Word document or, or Google Doc document exactly what is the workflows that you have and a technical spec that describes your application, exactly what it does, right? And the architecture the nitty gritty de uh, details, the limitation of your architecture, uh, what kind of design choices you made and why you made these design choices. Reading, I don't mind reading three, four, five pages design document if I'm interested, if someone actually sent me, says, hey, this is my resume, which is one page, but I built these three projects or these two projects, and here's a one link to the design document and there is a live project if you wanna see it. 
I will be very, very impressed personally, and I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will agree with that, that someone took the time to write down what they think and what how they think this design document will look like. And I know, guys, you asked me for a template, but in my opinion, don't stress this out. There is no godly template. Literally just type in what the architecture is, what the design document is, just word literally just a bunch of words that describe in details the technical decisions you made, the design components and all that stuff. So design documents, very, very, very critical because you can go back to this design document even for yourself. You, if you want to build an application, you have to have a design document that describes your application from, uh, from A to Z. All right, tool number three, architectural or system diagrams so number two was essentially just a, a document that describes your application your backend application or your fronted application in details right i'm talking triple a document level right where you describe things in detail and you have sections where you go into deep level diving right so the third tool is building the diagram architectural diagram so that is accompanied by the design document, right? Usually you have to build them by one by one. A lot of people do just the diagrams. I don't have anything against that, but I personally prefer a document that goes through the details in, in written form. That's my preference, but diagrams help the visualization and quickly identify the architecture, right? So, and you can use any diagramming model here. A lot of people use the uh, C4 model. A lot of people use UML, if you're into kinky things. And uh, a lot of people use simple blocks or circles and rectangles and that's it. And you, you describe how the components and the different systems interact with, you, with each other, right? And then if you want to go into diff each system or each service, and you can break down that into more and more diagrams. So diagrams, really, really powerful tool in your portfolio. Number four, uh, doesn't really apply to backend engineers, but frontend engineers, UX and UI diagrams or, or uh, interfaces, right? A uh, lot of tools that you can build to do that, uh, Gliffy, uh, balsamic uh, tools that help you design your front end so that how would the user interact with this and a lot of people underestimate how the power of the user experience user experience is the what the user actually interacts with so no matter how shiny your back end is and how fast and performant and low latency if your front end user experience i'm not talking about the code here user experience you can use stinking table tags for god's sake but and and you can have a great amazing user experience right you can have all the fancy component react models but if your user experience if i can't find what to click on app sucks right so that's the idea building ux ui diagrams and having this part of your portfolio is really internet and again could be applicable to be not applicable. And all of these tools are sometimes applicable, sometimes are not applicable. Tool number five, and uh, it is very applicable to PhD students specifically and uh, master's students where you write, essentially you sit down and write white papers or just long form paper about a problem that you're trying to solve. You couldn't have no code at all, or you can have sample code in the paper, but sharing a paper that you wrote in your resume as a link that is so powerful. That tells you, obviously, writing a paper is not something easy at all. But if you did, sharing it in your portfolio can really, really help your case, right? Demonstrate these things. And when you come to the actual interview, you can demonstrate that you actually wrote the paper. You can uh, have a discussion with the interviewee. You can have interest in discussion with whomever you're uh, actually just having a debate maybe with, right? Uh, so... Papers, very, very powerful tool. Again, not applicable for everyone because it requires a lot of blood and sweat and, and, and research. And it's very, very frustrating, especially that if this is something has has not been uh, 
explored before and you have to do a lot a lot of research to build papers so papers very very powerful tool tool number six uh books and that what personally got me into the united states and the company that i work on i, I wrote six books and in, in, in the gis technology that what i'm basically uh specialized in geospatial technology that's my specialty if you guys don't know i don't talk about it in my youtube just to avoid conflict but uh, that's why that's what i do and nine to five job is geospatial pure geospatial stuff right so i wrote six books about the geospatial and esri technology and then that's um, actually my books right there you can actually see the first book i wrote back in 2012 so yeah guys books that uh, proves that you are a subject matter expert definitely right and uh, if you reach the stage where you can essentially uh, write a meaningful book on a specific niche on your uh, topic on your subject then you essentially can demonstrate that you're a subject matter expert you're you have knowledge in this area and this will kind of boost your portfolio even more number seven again a very very popular way a lot of people that i'm following are actually doing that a lot of people i actually was the first discovered to write a book using this approach and that's blog post create your own blog whether on medium.com or just your own uh, site and then write about the thing you know just sit down and pick a problem that you faced and just write about what was the problem what did you do to solve it and what was the outcome did it work or not just sitting down writing these things people as they search the web they can find you they can find your blog and they see that okay you've written 10th 20 30 40 blog articles on this topic and that how you prove that essentially you 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 have a some sort of a expertise in that area you don't have to be the best but that kind of give you the edge in that area and, and that's how i got discovered back in 2009 when i wrote my first blog in 2010 i got discovered by this publishing company because i started writing about gis technology in my blog because and that's how i they they were searching about certain technology and they found that I'm among the few that I wrote about this. Say, hey, you're interested to write about this? Say, sure, let's do that. And uh, that's how things can uh, multiply and, and kind of link to each other. So blog, books, uh, technology, showing that you actually worked in a certain company, all this actually matter. So if you are great in writing and you have amazing writing skills, uh, essentially take that and, and put it in use write blogs write a lot of blogs uh tip or tool number eight making videos about the topic that you're and basically i don't have to say anything because what you're consuming what you're watching is this tool right videos i've been making videos since 2014 so i started with blogging in 2009 then i moved to writing books in 2012 and then i started making videos in 2014 so so you can see the the progression of, of my personal skin and it really feels good when you look back and say oh i actually did the work until i reached 2015 after 2014 writing my first book 2015 when i submitted my resume immediately it's like wow Okay, there are blog articles, there's this, there's that, there's all of that stuff. And then they actually essentially, uh, based on that, I got an interview. And then once I showed my skills, obviously you have to prove that you did all that work. And that shouldn't be hard if you actually did all that stuff. And some people will have problem uh, communicating speech-wise. And that's where video form and podcast, when we come to that, can really, really help. Your first video is gonna suck your second video is gonna suck your 10th video is gonna suck but as you can make and make and make and make and make and make more you're gonna start making you're gonna be more comfortable in front of a camera you're gonna start being better and delivering and concise the message and this video is too long so this is a bad example <laughs> but as you make more videos you're gonna get better and you can just share the link and say hey i made these videos about these topics i make these tutorials i made these things i'm yeah that's ve make video making also about that so it can show that you're subject matter expert and then can add to your portfolio so look how many tools you can use in order 
to build your portfolio. You don't have to use all of them. Final one is podcasting. A lot of people just focus on podcasting. And then you can link this to videos because people who make videos just strip the audio out and then put it as a podcast. That's what I do. I mean, right? I just, I talk to the camera. I mean, I my videos are, are easily podcastable because I don't make a lot of tutorial on code. And if when I do, I don't put those as podcasts because they, they don't make any sense. But videos like this are perfect for podcasts, right? You sit down and then anyone can listen to that. You don't have to see my ugly face, right? It doesn't make any sense. You don't have to. So podcasting can, if you have a 50, 60, 70 episode podcast talking about certain technology that you're passionate about, then that just adds up to your portfolio. And then you don't have to join a company. That This set of tools that I just talked about, which can, let's, let's, let's summarize them again. Live projects, system design documents, architectural diagrams, UX UI diagrams, papers, books, blog articles, videos, podcasts, and I'm pretty sure I missed something. This is just what I personally think can all add to your portfolio and you can make essentially a business out of these. If you can do all of them, I don't think anyone can sit down and have the time to do all of these things. I mean, I have nine to five. I, I, there's no way for me to do all of this. I can barely do the video, the podcast. I don't write blogs anymore. I don't have time. And uh, life projects, I don't, I, don't, I don't have time to sit down and, and write a fully functional life project to share with you guys anymore. I don't have that. The projects that I do is on work and they are confidential that I cannot share, obviously. The design documents are confidential, I cannot share. The diagrams I build are confidential. All of that stuff is just sitting there. So I didn't build personal project that uh, can share with you. So, so mo- some of you are better than me in that case, because they, you guys built project that you can share. I actually, I take that back. I, to, I built a project in 2009, that's now offline, that kind of linked uh, Google Map. You go to Google Map, back when satellite imagery wasn't that good. You go to Google Map and you, I show you the view in Yahoo Maps, I show you the view in Bing Maps, and I show you the view in Esri's map, So, uh, which is uh, our technology. So I, when you zoom to a place, I, I send the extent on all of them, and, and this is happening in all the same page. So I did this project and, and won some awards as well. So that that's one project that I can remember. I built so many Twitter API fancy GIS stuff as well that were public. I think they are on my LinkedIn. Uh, the links are broken, obviously, but that was back back when. I think just two or three is enough to build your portfolio, but you don't have to have all of them. So for me, I didn't have the live projects to showcase my expertise and how, oh, this is something I built. But I have design documents. I have diagrams that I personally built. I, I, uh, I wrote six books. I have... Uh, podcast, I have a videos, a set of videos. I have now over 500 videos on this channel. I didn't write any paper, so I'm not gonna claim that I did. I think writing paper is one of the hardest uh, things that you can do, but so PhD students, guys, kudos to you. And um, I obviously wrote a lot, a lot of blogs as well. Guys, what do you personally think? What are your favorite method of building your portfolio and, and showing your skills? Right, uh, let me know in the comment section below. If I missed any other tool, please share it in the comment section below. I'm gonna see you in the next one. And I uh, hope this video helped and uh, all the best in your search and in your career. And uh, stay patient and uh, stay hungry. Keep at it, keep grinding, keep the work. And find, uh, again, reference my back in engineering video that I talked about and reference how I built the design documents, the the whole process to actually build one of those design documents. I talked about it essentially, right? In one of the videos right here. And uh, just just pick one of the things that you're passionate about and then just go dive deep into it. There is no one that is expert in everything. That's that's literally impossible, right? So you're gonna pick something that you think that uh, worth it. You think that uh, investment your time investment kind of will pay off in the future. And uh, I wish you all the best, my friends. And uh, thank you so much. My name is Hussein, and I discuss back in engineering on this channel. And if you like the physio, hit a like. If you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. And uh,
type a nasty comment and then share it with your friends. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.